Hey guys, it's Philip Seagraves. Hope everybody's getting ready for the test. I'm going to take a few minutes here and go over one of the problems, or actually probably go over both the problems that we left off at the end of class. They're the same essentially as what we went on the board at the beginning of class. So I'm going to go quick and hopefully it'll be just a quick refresher, but again it'll be something that'll be good to know for the test and good to know as you're doing some business modeling out in the real world. Okay, so let's take a look at the test that we have right here. Um, actually, this is our review sheet from the other day. And our first question, if you remember, was a machine breakdown. Very similar to the one that we had in class. In this case, on the first day after the machine has been repaired, there is a 10% chance of a breakdown. The second day and any day after that, the probability of breakdown increases by 4%. So what we have in this case is the first day is 10, second day is 14, the next day is 18, and so on. And the machines are repaired on the same day. And we're going to assume that the machine will uh, break down if the random number is less than the failure, of course. That makes sense. The machine um, was last repaired two days ago. Okay, so we're on the, not the first day, but we're on the second day, which means on our first day, we have a 14% chance of the machine breaking down. So our probability of failure on day one is, now we are on the, uh, this is the day that we're in, in the series. This isn't the number of days since a breakdown. So when our second day, it's been broken, it's, uh, we're in our second, it was repaired two days ago, and the probability of failure, again, on our second day is 0.14, and our random number is a 9, it's less than the 14, so yes, we had a breakdown. Okay, now our next day, it was repaired, so we're in our first day. In this case, we have a 10% chance of failure, and is a 20 less than a 10? Nope. So we had no breakdown. All right, we had no breakdown. Oh, now we're back to our second day. It's been, it didn't break down this day, so we're now on our second day of no breakdown. So we're back to our probability of 14% again. And in this case, 67, is it less than our 0.14? No. So in this case, in our three day period, how many breakdowns did we have? We had one breakdown. So our answer is B. Okay. Should be a pretty straightforward then, straightforward question there to answer. All right, our next one is a, a queuing problem. It may not sound as much like a queuing problem that we talked about in class, but this is a, just a classic queuing problem. In this case, Apple's phones are ringing off the hook. People are calling in wanting to buy the new iPad. And we have our distribution just like we had the other day that we talked about. And the number of calls that are coming in, this is like people walking into the checkers, per hour, 15 calls, there's a 25% chance of 15 calls. And there is a, about a 25%, there's a 25% chance of 20 calls coming in. And now there's a 40% chance of 25 calls coming in. And there is a 10% chance of 30 calls coming in. And then there's a certain number of calls that each of the phone reps can handle. Now in this case, it's a midnight shift and we've only got two people on the phones. We have an agent number one and an agent number two. And so we're going to have a random number of inbound calls coming in for each hour, hours one, two, and three. And we're also going to have a random number of calls that each agent can handle. And these are the random numbers that we use on our table up here. These aren't the number of calls. These aren't the number of calls they come in or the calls that they handle. And we see here that the beginning queue on hold, the people waiting on the phone at the midnight shift when it starts, when these two agents come on, there's three people. So we're going to put a three in here. And our random number, this is for the calls coming in, is 48. So we look to our table up here, and we can see that our random number is between 26 and 50. We have 20 calls come in. So now we have three were the beginning, 20 arrived, 23 is how we, many we have in our queue. So our random number for agent number one is 91. So that means how many calls could they handle? 
in that period. So we're going to go up here and we're going to see that the number of calls that somebody can handle, this is for either agent, if it's between 91 or between 66 and 100, then they could handle 10 calls in that period. Agent number two, our random number for that one, for the first one here, is 56. So that means that this agent in that hour or that period could handle, the number falls in between 46 and 65, so they can handle nine calls. So the total capacity, the total number of calls they could handle, is 9 plus 10, or 19. So the number of people that they served, as long as this number is less than the total people waiting, then we're going to use this total number here. So they were able to help or serve or answer the phones for 19 people. So at the end of our period, how many people are left on the phone still waiting? Uh-oh, we have four people now. Okay, we started off with three. 23 people, I'm sorry, 20 people called, raising the queue to 23. We talked to 19 of them, so we have four left. So we're going to bring our four down here and start our next period. So our random number for the people calling in this time is 05. The number of people that come in up here is 15, because 5 is between this range. So now we have total is our 4 plus our 15, gives us 19 total people. So our random numbers this time are a 7 for agent number 1, 07, which means that agent number 1 can handle 7 calls. Agent number 2's random number this time is 89, which means agent number 2 can handle 10 calls this time. So the total number of calls that we can handle this time is 7 plus 10, or 17. We have our beginning queue is 4, 15 people arrived, we had 19 total. We can handle 17, so we'll handle all 17, which leaves, which means we serve 17 people, which means we're left at the end with 2. So we bring our 2 down here, that's 2 people are waiting on the phone. Now, for our last 3, um, our last period, we have a random number this time of 72. We have, that means we have 10 people, I'm sorry, 72 puts us in this range. 25 people call up. Now we have 2 plus 25 is 27 people waiting on the phones. Agent number 1 this time can handle, they have a random number of 50, which means from up here 50 is in this range, so that means they can handle 9 calls that hour. Agent number 2, their number, uh-oh, they didn't do so good this hour. Zero two, 2 which means that they're able to handle 7 calls that hour. That means we're able to handle a total of 7 plus 9, or 16 calls. And because that's less than the people waiting in the queue, we're going to handle 16 calls. And since we started with 27 in the system, or waiting on the phones, we handled 16. We have 11 left. So if we go down to our answers, let's move that so we can, so you guys can see it. That would mean that our answer is E. Okay, well hopefully that gives everybody an idea how to handle that. It's not a very uh, mathematically challenging. There's just kind of a, a lot of logic that you have to go through to make sure you get all these pieces in the right boxes and you kind of think through each row. I'm looking forward to seeing every one of you guys on Tuesday, and I hope you all do great, study hard, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.